everyone, and welcome to the VitaCast episode 30. Yes, we've made it to episode 30. Woohoo! Celebrate! Well, joining me as usual is Kyle Wakeling. Hey guys, how's it going? And we have a special guest, Marcus Blackstock. What's going on, Marcus? Hi. Well, yes, and Yuki, doing our recording, as usual. No Paul, sadly. <laughs> We're going to have a full podcast, but we just have to deal with Marcus. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> just giving you shit. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with uh, what we've been playing. Uh, I've been playing the crap out of Monster Mon piece, uh, doing the review, so I've got to get through that game. I think I'm towards the end, but Kyle has informed me earlier that there's a lot more than I thought. So uh, get that done as soon as I can. Um, what else have you been playing? Oh, uh, some Killzone Mercenary, uh, Hot Shots Golf, beating Kyle as usual, but, you know, that's no surprise to anyone that listens to this podcast. Um, what else? There's always something, and I always forget. Anyways, uh, what about you, Kyle? Well, um, I've been cleaning up trophies on Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, which isn't very bad. Um, I'm actually kind of having fun doing that. Um, I played a little Lone Survivor, cleaned up some trophies there, uh, as always playing Hot Shots Golf, and even some Kill Zone. I've been trying to get back in the game a little bit. Um, played a little Monster Mon piece online, uh, testing my skills after getting that platinum that Tyler really wants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a l- even a little Soul Sacrifice Delta, although I really have to get back into that and clean up some trophies. So, yeah. That, that's what I've been gaming at. What about you, Marcus? Um, well, I got to Uncharted 3 Platinum and Batman Arkham Asylum a while nice. ago. So those are done, finally. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, still going through Persona 4 <laughs> and playing 1001 Spikes sometimes. <laughs> when, when it doesn't make you hate yourself. <laughs> Very brief. Play that one. Do you like uh, Hotline Miami, or have you ever played that game? Oh, I planned on that in like two days. So you like that type of game? I that liked it a lot. <laughs> but 1001 Spikes is not your not no, feeling right. Not at all. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Uh, is that all you've been playing? Uh, I've been playing some FIFA. Cool. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> I haven't played FIFA in a while. I sold my last copy of FIFA, but I might get the new one, although it's still the, what is that, Legacy Edition or whatever? Yeah, it's the Leg- Legacy Edition. Yeah, so I don't know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just boycott them until they make a real one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's head on over to the new releases, and since Paul isn't here, he's going to call in, right, Kyle? <laughs> Yeah, he's uh he's phoning it in this week, so let's go to Paul on the phones. <laughs> hey, Paul, how's it going from uh, England? Hello, everyone. It's Paul from the Vita Lounge here. I'm just going to go through this week's new releases. In North America, we've got one of those funny weeks that we uh, mentioned a few weeks ago when you've got four new releases, starting with Atelier Verona Plus, um, which can be picked up for $39.99. Blaz Blue Chrono Phantasma, which is $39.99. X-Blaze Code Embryo, which is going to be reviewed by Kyle very soon, which is available for $33.99, but you get a PS Plus discount on that for $27.19 as well. And, uh, of course, you've got Zed Run launching this week for $8.99. Uh, Brad reviewed that last week, and uh, it's got a few few mixed reviews, but if you pick it up, let us know what you, what you think of that one. There's a great sale on in America at the moment as well, with Dust Force, Dynasty Warriors 8, Escape Plan, and Oli Oli all available. In Europe, we've got Another World 20th Anniversary Edition launching, which is available for £6.49, €7.99 Euros, or $11.95. And you also have One Piece Unlimited World Red, which is launching for £29.99, €34.99 Euros, or $47.95. A few great sales on the EU store this week as well, starting with The Walking Dead Season 2 Season Pass, which is available for half price at £7.99. 9.99 euros or 14.95 dollars um, not all the games released yet but it's well worth picking up at that kind of price 
there's also a fantastic sale on there's too many games for me to list but little big planets in there motorstorm rc's in there um amen 2's in there there's just there's tons of games on there just go and have a look and you you, you might find something that you'll enjoy playstation plus games have been announced for both north america and for europe um both regions will be getting doki doki universe Whereas in North America, you'll be finally getting Muramasa Rebirth. And in Europe, we'll be getting Lego Batman 2. Um, it'd be interested to know what your thoughts are on those. So get in touch and let us know. That's pretty much everything. All right. Thanks, Paul, for calling it in from all the way from England, taking the time out of the day to talk to us. <laughs> uh, let's head over to the news for this week. And unlike last week, this week is a little sh- shorter in the news. So you don't have to worry about an hour and a half of us reading off some news. So... Let's get it started and out of the way. Uh, first up, Another World launching next week. Uh, we already told you that Another World, the classic Amiga, Amiga platform puzzler, was making a Vita appearance, but it seems that later this year actually means next week. Launching in both Europe and North America, the game follows Lester Knight as he finds himself lost on an alien planet trying to find his way home. As an added bonus, gamers will have the opportunity to enjoy the original graphics in HD and listen to fully remastered sounds and sound effects, or the original CD audio and soundtrack. Uh, In addition, for an even greater experience and added challenges, the game will feature three difficulty levels as well as trophies and to unlock. So, there you go. Uh, Next up, the Swapper delayed until August. Facepalm Games' first title, a futuristic science fiction puzzler platformer was due to hit playstation platforms next week but we have to we have just been told that the game has now been delayed until early august uh the game will now launch on august 5th in north america and the following day in europe and is a cross by title uh curve has said that gamers will be able to pre-order the game at a discount from early july next up Double Eleven want to bring pixel junk side scroller to vita uh tvl reader magnum stash asked Lee Hutchinson from Double Eleven about the likelihood of seeing Pixel Junk side scroller on Vita and got this pleasant reply. Quote, everything is on the table. It's just about time, staffing, and money. We ideally want to do the entire Pixel Junk set. End quote. Pixel Junk Shooter Ultimate launched this month and is available on PlayStation Plus for the whole of June. And Pixel Junk Monsters Ultimate HD released last year and both are incredibly fun, so it would be nice to see this see the light of day. Rhythm Vocaloid title IAVT Colorful will reportedly not be making the previously given July 31st release date. Uh, we just brought you news the other day of the game's step up and play mode, as well as some other features, but now we've got a sat, the sad duty of bringing you the news of a delay as well. IAVT Colorful has been delayed into the fall for Japan, according to a post on Jamatsu. More specific information about the de- delay hasn't been revealed, but we'll be sure to let you know when or if we hear anything. Next up, D3 Publisher has revealed new information for its upcoming PlayStation Vita title, Bullet Girls. This information brings details about new characters and actions for the high school shooter. Uh, due to release in Japan on July er, August 28th, Bullet Girls is a shooter that sees you play as teenage girls who take on military-style missions as members of their high school's ranger corps. Uh, the first character we're introduced to is Nozomi, a girl who has short orange hair and has many fans in the school. Nozomi's style is wild, and her weapon of choice is a RPG. Growing up with her grandmother, Nozomi told many war stories, uh, so her love for all military things grew. Nozomi can be found in the club room most of the time. The other character that we get a glimpse of is Mai, a third-grade student, who has long purple hair and can also be found spending her time in the club room. Mai has many skills and focuses on building strong relationships with other members of the Ranger Corps. Uh, D3 Publisher also revealed information about actions that you can perform during missions. You can take on missions however you like, with the only goal being to clear the mission. So whether you want to jump, dodge, kick, or dash your way to success, the choice is yours. Another part of the game that has been shown is Bullet Girls TPS, Touch Pantsu system that allows you to use the touch screen to touch any of the girls' pants when you see them. Doing this will allow you to see how each of the girls react with new items of underwear unlocking as you progress through the game. So far, there has been no news on a Western localization for Bullet Girls, and yes, it's another one of those pervy games. 
Uh, that sounds really weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're taking a little too far. They're just throwing that on everything now, so I, I'm just getting a little. Eh. Yeah, is it? It kind of reminds me of uh, what's that game? Oh wow, I just blanked on it. You're you're really excited for it, Kyle? Oh, yeah, God, ev- it? everyone says it's like pretty much like a, a Senran Kakura crossed with like Monster Mon piece, then with guns. Like that's what yeah. everyone pretty much says the game is. So I. Do you agree with that? <clears throat> sort of, only they're taking it a little far. Like, I, I don't know. It just seems like they, they took, like, this idea of having girls with guns, and then they tacked on all these, like, features that uh, these other games have used to, like, differentiate themselves. So, right. eh, I, I'm not really excited. <laughs> would you would you get this game if it came west? Uh, if it was really cheap, I might try it, but I, I wouldn't be looking for it, no. I gotcha. Right. Not... Not at my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, moving on with the news. Uh, Milestone has announced that MotoGP 14 will now release later on PlayStation Vita than the PS3 and PS4 versions, which were released on June 20th. Uh, it is expected that MotoGP 14 will release in different countries on different dates, so it's worth checking your local retailer if you were, if, if you wish to purchase this game, blah blah blah. My tongue tied. Um, currently UK retailer game have the game's release date set as July 4th. So if you're interested in this title, make sure to keep an eye on the Vita Lounge and we'll be sure to bring you more news on MotoGP as soon as we have it. And if you're in North America, you still have to wait till September, so. <laughs> hey, at least it's coming. That's true, that's true. I'm, I'm grateful that it's coming. Yeah. My friend was so excited when I told him that it was coming to North America. <laughs> All right. Continuing on with the news. Borderlands 2 update version 1.04 is available. Uh, so let's talk about what it fixes. Uh, stability and performance has been improved throughout the game, including addressing known issues with audio playback. Gyroscopic controls can now be independently inverted. This should ensure that fans of inverted vertical look will also be able to enjoy gyroscopic aiming as well. Uh, there are now scaling sliders for rear touchpad input inputs in the option menus. Many users mapped lesser used actions to the rear touchpad, but reported that in gripping their PlayStation Vita systems, they'd still accidentally trigger those inputs. Users can now scale the input area down to much smaller zones, and yeah. Uh, next fixed is an issue where players were not notified that their online session had expired, which caused players to incorrectly appear available for multiplayer. So yes, let's keep those updates coming because anyone that owns Borderlands 2 on the Vita knows that there's some issues and that they they should have really pushed this game back maybe another month and <laughs> focused on these issues. But the game's out, so start updating. <laughs> and no, the patch doesn't fix everything, but it does fix something. So yeah. you're gonna want to you know get everything that you can fix as it comes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, next up, Unity for PlayStation Mobile released and free. The guys over at the Unity 3D blog have announced the official release of Unity for PlayStation Mobile. Uh, For the first time ever, ever, anyone in the PlayStation Mobile developer program can publish their Unity content to PlayStation Store completely free of charge. There's no dev kit required, and there are absolutely no additional fees. The PlayStation Mobile build option even works with the free version of Unity and Unity Pro. So developing and deploying your Vita titles is is as easy and integrated as humanly possible. Uh, interested in finding out more? Hop on over to the Unity 3D blog for full release information, as well as options for developers to obtain a copy. Next up, um, manga anime series Hi- Hana Yamada getting a Vita game. Bandai Namco Games has announced that a game based on the manga and anime series Hana Yamada Kyle's laughing, is in a development for PlayStation Vita. Uh, Hayana Yamada Yosoki Live is set to be an adventure game with rhythm and action parts, though apart from that, not much is known at this time. As it sits, we're pretty sure this is Japanese only, but then again, you never know these days. The Hayana Yamada anime will begin airing on July 8th in Japan, but there's no word on a release date for the game. Yeah, so you weren't doing too bad. Hany Yamada is right. You're saying Whee! that right. It's it's 
Yosukoi, though. <laughs> ah. Yosuki. <laughs> anyway, moving on with the news, now that Tyler's getting better with his Japanese. <laughs> Sakai Project is looking for Kickstarter funding in order to provide a professional translation for Visual Novel World and Economica. Here's the lowdown on the game straight from the Kickstarter page. Quote, written by Isuna Hasakura, the author of Spice and Wolf, World and Economica is a three-part visual novel set in the far future on the moon, 16 years after humans have begun to colonize it. A young boy named Haru has been chasing his wildest dream to stand where no man has stood before. To do so, he needs capital, a ludicrous amount of capital. What better place to get that money than by using the stock market? End quote. Developer Spicy Tales completed all three episodes of the game in 2013, but so far has only, it has only been available in Japan and on Windows. Spicy Tales wants Sakai Project to provide a co- complete professional translation of the episodes, as well as a wider release on Steam for Windows, OS X, and Linux. Those platforms are included at the base goal of their Kickstarter campaign, $22,000, which has since been smashed through. But what about Vita? Well, the stretch goal for Vita is set at $100,000, and with 15 days to go and just shy of 59000 raised as of this podcast recording, there's a very clear possibility that we'll see this on Vita, and any funding you could help with would surely ensure that. We'll let you know how World End Economica does when the funding campaign ends July 9th. If you want any more information, check out the full Kickstarter listing. There's a link on the site. Next up, Brazilian indie developer Qwhite recently posted a video on their Facebook page showing the recent slot car simulator game High Tech Racing Plus running on a Vita. We'd never heard of this one before, so let me give you a little bit about the game from the developers. High Tech Racing Plus is a slot car simulation, a virtual version of the classic toy of the 80s and 90s. With realistic physics, HTR Plus offers an adrenaline-packed racing simulation experience. No news is available other than the game's existence in the video, which you can see on the site, but we'll bring you anything new as it develops. So do you think you just hit, like, the gas and then let go and that's it? Because you can't really turn, because it's a slot car. I'm really confused. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's stuff like nitrous and stuff that you like. There's different times that you can boost that would make like a bigger difference, and they could really like um, add a bunch of stuff that would that would like make a uh, a difference other than just you know turning and stuff. Right. Um, but I'm not really 100 percent sure. I didn't even actually get a chance to look at the trailer yet. So. Yeah, I watched the trailer. It looks interesting, but. <laughs> that's one thing I was thinking. I was like, I used to play these cars all the time when I was younger. <laughs> Literally, you have one button. It's the gas, and then that's it. <laughs> <Simple> <laughs> so I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> you never know. Could be super hard. I, just I don't know. To wait and see. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, that Dangan shooter gets a September release for Japan. Oh yeah. Uh, Danganronpa, another episode is set between Trigger Happy Havoc and Goodbye Despair, with Makoto Negi's younger sister Komaru as the main character. Joining her is Genocide Jill and a young boy named Toku, who seemingly end up following Komaru as she sets off to find her brother and the other survivors. As for the enemy, you'll be facing around 10 different types of Monokuma, taking them on with either a megaphone-style hacking gun, that's for Komaru, Scissors for Genocide Jill, or whatever Toko has in his arsenal. Danganronpa, another episode, will be released on September 25th in Japan, priced at 7,020 yen, which is approximately $68.90 US. No news yet on a Western release, but Trigger Happy Havoc and Goodbye Despair both made it over here, so it's certainly possible we'll see this one as well. Oh yeah, let's hope so. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely hope so. I'm down for everything dang it. Love it. Badass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As promised, the news was not very long, so let's read our last two news stories. Last one here. RPGs AR No Surge Plus and Seal No Surge Offline coming to Vita. Gust is bringing both of these games uh, in October. Uh, the port of AR... R, is it AR or is it R? Do you know, Kyle? I believe it's R. All right. R. The port of R, No Surge Plus, will include new costumes, compatibility with the Vita's touchscreen, and additional purification ceremony characters. Seal No Surge 
offline takes a different route as it will be a completely reprogrammed version of the game instead of a port. Both R No Surge Plus and Steel No Surge Offline are set to launch in Japan on October 2nd, available physically for 6,264 yen or roughly 6,150 US each or digitally for 5,554 yen, roughly 54.50 US each. All right, last story here. New partnership means Sorcery Saga in New Zealand and Australia this summer. Publisher Rising Star Games and Mindscape, a game and software distributor, announced yesterday that, that, yesterday that they will be partnering up to bring Sorcery Saga to Australia and New Zealand. Here's what Martin DeFries, MD of Rising Star Games, had to say about the development. Quote, Rising Star Games' main goal is to bring exciting and unique games to as many people around the world as possible. So being able to work with Mindscape only helps to extend the reach of our releases even further. End quote. Uh, Tanya Valesco, COO of Mindscape Asia Pacific, added, quote, We are really excited to welcome Rising Star Games to our already stellar lineup of games partners. Uh, their diverse range of titles is very popular amongst gamers, and we look forward to releasing more games in the future. End quote. Sorcery Saga Curse of the, Je- the Great Curry God will be making it to Australia and New Zealand shelves this July for fifty nine ninety five. And that is the news. Oh, no, it's not, Tyler. I oh, got to cut in wow. with one more. One more. Way to make me look like a horrible <laughs> person. Well, it, it's not that you're a horrible person. It's that I just got an email with something that's kind of relevant. So Go I just it. wanted to mention this real quick. Um, Idea Factory International have just contacted me. And Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth 1 will be released on August 26th in North America and August 27th in Europe. So... Yeah, and it will be released in the Australian PlayStation Store as well, so don't feel left out, Australians. <laughs> Is that it, Kyle? Can I, can I say it now? Yeah, you, you can go ahead there, Tyler. <laughs> Yay, that's all the news. Celebrate. A little dance, Tyler. <laughs> Make a little love? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the, the podcast, man. Okay. Hey, at least they can't see anything, right? <laughs> Nah, they probably still wouldn't want to hear that. Anyways. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Let's Moving get, on, looks yeah. like, to our talking point. <laughs> yeah. So, number one here, uh, as we seem to have been doing every week, because it's a good one, announced release games we're looking forward to from the week. What do you guys think? Um, What's that one? Oh, isn't uh, Atelier... Verona Plus coming out today? Yes, it is. Well, I'm looking forward to that one. <laughs> Although I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> if you see Tyler on the corner, give him money. <laughs> he needs it. I tell you, Verona Plus. I need that Verona. <laughs> People be like, what? <laughs> Verona! Anyways. <laughs> yeah. So just Verona? Yeah. Well... Just from this week, um... Well, from the news, too, right? It's it's what's releasing and what they've announced here in the news that we've just read. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know about the, the Danganronpa shooter until just now. <laughs> well, Tyler, what the hell's wrong with you? I don't know. So that actually sounds pretty awesome, and I'm hoping it would be coming to the West, because I would hop on that right away. Definitely. And you should go check out the trailer. There's a trailer on the site. Oh, I'll do just that, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. As for me, um, I'm definitely interested in Dang and Rafa another episode. Um, I'd like to see what World End en- Economica is. I really haven't looked into it all too much, so uh, I'm interested in visual novels, so I'd like to check into that. Um, other than that, pretty much just what's in the releases. Um, Explays Code Embryo, I think we've talked about this before. I didn't know if I was kind of interested in maybe playing this or not, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try it at least, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, and I, I kind of interested in the Atelier games as well, so I might check out Verona Plus as well. Depends on if I have time and if my backlog and money allows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
What about you, Marcus? Anything interesting you've seen this week or coming out this week? Uh, that farming simulator is coming out. Looks, those things always make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh, this one have multiplayer, do you know? I have no idea. All I know is this one's like 30-something dollars or something ridiculous. Uh, so it better have multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> better have multiplayer on the multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> and then that uh, MotoGP, that looks cool. Uh, I'm always down for some motorcycle pileups. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. So moving on to our next talking point, I think. Uh, what was the best deal you got on a game or games you bought on Vita, either physical or digital? Huh. Well, I guess you could say every game I've gotten off Plus for free has been like, the <laughs> best deal. <laughs> well, that's that's kind of our, our next question. So maybe just go with games you I... haven't got enough plus <laughs> ruin the surprise sorry <laughs> um huh I'm trying to think of one now do you guys know because i can't think of one right now ah for me there's been a couple um let me think here well hot shots golf for 325 is a pretty damn good deal That's true. uh the god of war glitch <laughs> if anyone knows what that is, that was a good deal. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I can't really think of too many like that that weren't plus um, free games that were really good deals. Yeah. What about or maybe I just didn't buy them as good deals. I got them before they were good deals because I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, can't think of anything, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I can only think of PlayStation Plus stuff. <laughs> I got uh, Fat Princess for free from that app they made with on the iOS. Oh, that oh that's pretty sweet. Uh, ninety-nine cents sale. I got <laughs> Metro City Rampage. It's pretty nice. That is a good deal. And I got Smart as physical copy for five bucks. Oh, <laughs> you just made me think of a deal that I got. This wasn't off of. Uh, the Sony store or anything related to Sony, but uh, this local game store that's near my house had a deal where you'd buy one game and then they'd send you a, a random free game. Like, they wouldn't tell you what it was. They'd just send you a random game. So I bought uh, Lego Harry Potter for the Vita, and they sent me, uh, I think it's Marvel vs. Capcom or Ultimate Marvel. I don't know. It's that, it's that fighting game. They sent me that for free, and it was like a $30 game at the time. I was like, sweet, don't like fighting games, so I went and sold it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Got free money. That is sweet. <laughs> All right. I think it's time to move on to our next one. And that has to do with plus. Like, Tyler's spoiled because you yeah. can't read the stupid thread. <laughs> well, hey, I'm looking at it right now. It's his favorite plus title. I didn't say which one have you gotten. Because there's tons of games I've gotten that I don't think are my favorite. Just saying. It's enough out of you, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah, I spoiled it again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as Tyler said, this one is the favorite plus title you've gotten. So this could either be something you've got on huge discount or something you got for free on plus that you went, oh my god, I can't believe I got this. <laughs> well, for me, actually, I think I know what Kyle's is. He just got Terraria recently, so I'm feeling that that might be his favorite. <laughs> um <laughs> Tyler's looking to get kicked out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't go on without me, Kyle. <laughs> we have Marcus. <laughs> so I'm being replaced. Is that what maybe, this is? Maybe, maybe. Is this his tryout and I just didn't know about it? Where's the... <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, anyways, I guess if it's my last episode, I might as well go out strong. My favorite plus title would have to be probably the Uncharted Golden Abyss because I did not... I've never played an Uncharted, so... Yeah. <laughs> you might, Put you your can, life together. Yeah, I know. I have problems. Leave me alone. <laughs> just, just get out and go play. <laughs> <laughs> so, Uncharted Golden Abyss was my first Uncharted experience, and I really enjoyed it. And I got it for free. So, yay, plus. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I don't know. There's been a lot of really good ones. Not Terraria. <laughs> um, yeah, no. I tagged it, but I will likely never ever download it. Um, but my favorite plus title I've gotten 
probably has to be Gravity Rush. Um, I, I just love the hell of that game, and I still go back to it every once in a while and just kick the hell around town. Um, I bought the DLC and played through it, and it's just awesome. Platinumed it and 100%ed it. Yeah, uh, yeah Platinum Club. <laughs> 100% Club, Tyler. Okay, <laughs> shut up. Anywho, so yeah, Gravity Rush, but... Um, honorable mention goes to Rayman Origins and Sonic because I had fun with both those as well. Gotta go fast. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go fast, faster, 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 faster. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for talking points. Unless anyone else has anything to throw in or one uh, that they've uh, come uh, up with. Miami. So good. I didn't know what to expect really, but then I got a platinum in two days because it was so fun. <laughs> And you got it on Plus for free? Yeah, that was like nice. the first one I got a Plus ever, first game. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on to listener mail. Uh, we've got three listener mail comments here. Uh, first one here is from Jack Gall via email. He says, Freedom Wars is getting even more hype and looks more interesting by the minute. I'm hyped. What about you? Oh, yeah. I like uh, the Monster Hunter style games, and this one looks to add a new twist to it. So I'm, I'm going to hop on that Freedom Wars day one. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely interested. I'm actually having a internal conflict because I kind of want to hop on my Japanese account and download the demo, which is available. <laughs> Although, I think if I download the demo, I'm not going to want to come back from my Japanese account for like a couple days, and there's some games I'm definitely going to have to play, so... Kyle, you can wait it out with <sighs> the rest of us. Okay. <laughs> need a, I need a PlayStation TV, Tyler, and then that would solve my problems. <laughs> now, in the meantime, I'll get one of my three Vitas and do that, get my oh, Japanese account. Oh, shut Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Sony and get them to come confiscate two of those Vitas and give them to poor children. <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> you can't afford games. <laughs> That's okay. They can play whatever's on there. They can use Tally's account. <laughs> I'll format it, Kyle, before they get here. That's okay. I'll, I'll get in. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Marcus? Are you into for, uh, like the style that Freedom Wars is going for? Uh, all I've seen is that. That TV spot that I posted. That's so all you've seen. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> thumbnails though. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Do you, have you played uh, Soul Sacrifice? Yeah. Do you it's, like it? Uh, I not really. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. All right. Well, <laughs> we know what Marcus doesn't like: 1001 Spikes and Monster Hunter style games. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good to know. Good to know. That's what I'll be giving him in the future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that mean. Debatable. Most of the time. <laughs> to, <laughs> to everyone but Tyler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so moving on with the questions here. Um, <laughs> next up, uh, one from David Goodman via email, and he says, Kyle, I took your advice from two podcasts ago and returned to Kmart to pick up that $8 clearance Hot Shots golf game for the Vita. When I returned to the game section, I picked up and brought my brand new game for $5. Uh, apparently, he got it even cheaper than $8. <laughs> cool. Uh, either that's cooler or that's a typo. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again for the advice. However, it may take me some time before I'll be able to play with you guys online. And now to the question. With Sony announcing the end of PSP in Japan a couple weeks ago, I couldn't help but taking a good look at my PSP and realizing how good of a run it had. Prior to buying a Vita, I owned three PSPs and still have my third one, which still works. I was wondering if any of you owned a PSP as well, and if you did not, what stopped you from buying one? What was your least most favorite game on it, and do any of you have great or terrible memories associated with owning one? Oh, boy. Yes, I owned a PSP. Uh, I remember uh, my older brother bought one, and I don't remember how old I was, but I thought it was like the greatest thing in the world and he was into the midnight club games and that's the first game he showed me and i was like i've got to get this so i got one got that game and also got uh the grand theft auto liberty city stories game which would probably be my favorite i played the f out of that game (laughs) (laughs) 
and I have it on my Vita actually because that game is so good. I love it. <laughs> nice. What about you, Marcus? Um, I did not have a PSP. No I, PSP. I had a DS. I was I was a poor young child, so I couldn't. <laughs> <play that game. laughs> but I would say Peace Walker is my favorite game because I played the port and it's Metal Gear, so you know. Nice. All right, good choice, good choice. As for me, I owned a PSP. Um, I got one. I think it was like about a month after first one released. Um, I saw some kid at school with it, and I was like, "Damn, I gotta have one of those." That's falling. <laughs> So I got that, and I got Hot Shots Golf Open Tea with it. Um, and that's probably was one of my favorite games on it. Um, Hot Shots 1 and 2 and SSX on tour, just the best games. I played the hell out of those. They probably spent at least 66% of my time on PSP on one of those two games. So, nice. yeah. <laughs> um, terrible memories associated with owning one. I don't have any terrible memories, but I have a good memory. Um, I remember sitting, well, actually, tons of good memories. I remember sitting in class when I was bored because I was that kid who always did his work and had it done, like, way early and then sat there for the rest of the class. So <laughs> um, instead of sitting there, I used to bust out the PSP below my desk and play Tony Hawk's Underground or Hot Shots Go, and that was the way I passed time in high school. So, yeah. That's really funny <laughs> because I did when I was in uh because math was my favorite or not favorite but best subject <laughs> so I would always get done before everyone else and I remember uh, I finished like 20 minutes before it was time to go and pulled out my PSP started playing uh, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories and <laughs> the teacher walks up behind me and just starts watching me killing people. <laughs> and and this girl like pulls out her phone to like text or something and the teacher looks up and he's like hey no texting in class and she's like what? but he's on his video game thing how come he gets to play and he's like because he's actually done with his work <laughs> nice nice good times that's pretty sweet you gotta love when other people get scolded while you're doing something way worse and they just <laughs> let you get away with it <laughs> <laughs> good times all right, so there you go, David. That's what we know and what we think and everything about the PSP. Uh, moving on, another one from David Goodman. Uh, this one, I guess, has political connotations, so if you don't like politics, plug your ears. Uh, the following question for the podcast has political connotations, so I'll do my very best to keep it as gaming-focused as possible. Several weeks ago, the U.S. FCC dropped the existing net neutrality laws, which have permitted equal and fair access to everyone across the Internet, be it people or business. As a result of this in North America, Netflix has been forced to pay ISP holders for preferential treatment and what some have referred to as legal blackmail. Since Netflix is a streaming service no different than PlayStation Now, what is to stop these ISP companies from forcing Sony to pay for preferred treatment? With first-party support now shrinking on the Vita platform and PlayStation now being the only major support Sony is currently willing to give it, it seems that this change in law could soon affect gamers, as I have a hard time believing that something that affects PlayStation users in one country won't affect those in other regions. What are your thoughts on this matter? Do you think that the revocation of net neutrality in America could directly or indirectly affect PlayStation now in other countries? And all was quiet. <laughs> we need like cricket sound effects yeah so insert cricket sound effects and um, visualize tumbleweeds <laughs> and then I guess I'll try and answer this question um, really I, I don't think these kind of things are going to stand for long like um, a lot of the stuff that goes on with the internet that people try and do you know um, different laws different things getting banned different you know laws that come into context where it has something to do with you know the internet as a global entity um, they don't really stand long like if you if you look at a lot of these um, you know SOPA and all these other things that you know trying to change the internet and regulate this and regulate that whether they pass or not they get overturned whether they come into existence or not, people find ways around them. So really, I, I don't think that we're going to have to worry about stuff like that. I think either the internet is going to evolve or the people are just not going to stand for it enough that it's just not going to happen. So, uh, and whether it happens, like they pass, you know, different things that cause there to be an argument or something happen in the short term, 
I, I don't think it's going to be an issue in the long term, so I don't see it being a problem for PlayStation now. What Kyle said. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there, there you go. Um, hopefully what I predict kind of is true and they don't go some random tangent because it's been known to happen, but you know, that's, that's kind of the way it, it's been turning out so far. So I, I don't see them, um, getting away with this, so to speak, for so long. All right. Is that all our listener mail for this week? It is, Tyler. It is. Oh boy. Well, let's head on to the last thing for this episode. Game recommendation. And my game recommendation is Castle Storm. I think we might have recommended this way back in the day, but it's a great game. And it's on sale this week, so go grab it. How much was it again, Kyle, on sale? Do you remember? It's four eighty nine on PS Plus and six ninety nine for you lowly peasants. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. P four G. Are you recommending Persona Four? Yeah. It's a good game. <laughs> <laughs> so Marcus recommends Persona Four, although that that's pretty much you know, something that can go unsaid on this podcast. I think we've talked about it enough that if you don't have P4G and you're listening to our podcast, you probably hate the game or can't <laughs> find it. <laughs> One of the two. I didn't think I would like it. Okay, so it's pretty I know. A lot of people are like that. Like, I really went going into it. I didn't think I was going to like it either. A lot of people said, you know, P4G is the best game on Vita, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, whatever. So I bought a copy and I fell in love with it. It was awesome. So... Yeah, it's it's one of those games like Hot Shots Golf that, that transcends its genre and ideas that people can, from way outside like the box, like people that would never ever play those games, people that would never play RPGs or visual novels play P4G and they're like, holy shit, this is a good game. Well, Castle Storm, go grab that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I haven't played Castle Storm, so I can't talk it off like that. However, P4G... Yeah. Is that the uh, one where you're on a castle and you shoot arrows at guys? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I played the demo. <laughs> it's pretty good. I liked it. There's more to it. Like, uh, it has like the same mechanics, kinda, of like Angry Birds, but you can actually like spawn in as like a knight and run around and hack and slash people that are trying to take over your castle. But there's multiplayer. There's a story. There's DLC. It's a it's a pretty decent long game, and it's only like what Kyle said, really cheap price, and it's a lot of content, so go grab that one. You won't be disappointed. And if you are, blame Kyle. Blame Kyle. <laughs> cool, cool. Blame Tyler. Hey. And as always, with anything we should recommend, you should always check out the review on the site first, and there is a review, of course, for Castle Storm and P4G if you're, for some reason, on the fence about that, <laughs> uh, though I don't know why you would be. So... Anything we recommend pretty much has a review on the site. Go check it out if you're on the fence. Yes, do that. All right, well, let's get out of here. As always, you can find all the news stories that we talked about on thevitalounge.net. You can find us all on Twitter. I'm at Mr. PS Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. Yuki is at Yuki underscore WR. Marcus is, is it at Cac Boy? Yeah. Yeah, I remembered. So K A C B O Y. There you yeah. go. Um, also on Facebook, just search the Vita Lounge YouTube channel, Lounge Play. It is back. We just posted a recent episode, so go watch some Killzone Mercenary gameplay and some Hot Shots Golf multiplayer with some randoms that we had no idea who they were, but they decided to do stuff to Kyle and I. <laughs> <laughs> it was a close one. Go watch it. Yeah, um, close one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not for Kyle. Spoilers, mm-hmm. but anyways, uh, also sign up for the forum, join the conversation, just thevitalounge.net slash forum. Uh, also, we are on iTunes. If you haven't subscribed yet or you've been curious about why we haven't been on it, we have been on it for the past four episodes, I think. I believe so, yes. So go subscribe to that. And yeah, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in this week, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care. Later, guys. Bye.